Now the technique that Gregor Mendel was using and what we continue to use to understand these concepts is called the monohybrid cross. And what that means is that we are starting with true breeding parents. So that's what you see here. The true breeding parent means that we have a homozygous dominant crossing with a homozygous recessive. And we know that they are true breeding because we can self-pollinate over and over and over again and only get the dominant trait here and the same here, self-pollinate over and over and over again and only get the recessive trait. So we start with true, true breeding parents. If we start with the homozygous dominant and the homozygous recessive, we will always get the heterozygous condition in the F1 generation. And that's what I was just showing you in the previous slide with the yellow and green peas. So we're, if we have a homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, we cross those, the F1 generation will always give us 100% heterozygous condition because this parent only has the dominant trait to pass on. This parent only has the recessive trait to pass on, so all the offspring will have one of each. Then what we often will do is cross between the offspring of the F1 generation, so heterozygous with a heterozygous, to see what the outcome of the F2 generation will be. And in order to do that and, and track the individual alleles, we use the Punnett square method. Now before we get to walking you through a Punnett square, this is, I want you to try and visualize it actually on the chromosomes using this, this diagram here. So here's our true breeding dominant parent. Two chromosomes, these are homologous chromosomes, each has the same gene. These are the alleles of that gene, and if it's a true breeding parent, homozygous dominant, both is going to be, both allele is going, to, are going to be the dominant trait purple flowers, for example. We're crossing that with the homozygous recessive true breeding parent. Both alleles have the recessive, uh, this recessive trait, the white flowers, for example. So remember, meiosis, in order to make the gametes, the cell, germ cell, has to divide by meiosis. So here we have meiosis one where those homologs are separated. So we get first replication of the DNA. So here we have two chromosomes that are replicated. All the alleles are recessive. Here we have the chromosomes that have been replicated. All the alleles are dominant. Meiosis one occurs. We end up with two cells where those homologs have been separated. So now we have one cell with one chromosome that is replicated another cell with the other chromosome, the other homolog that has been replicated. Then meiosis II occurs. Now we have created the gametes. So here are all the sperm. Here are all the eggs. If the parent only had recessive alleles, every single gamete it produces will have recessive alleles. If the parent only has dominant alleles, every gamete it makes, every sperm it makes, or every egg it makes will only have the dominant trait. Now we have fertilization with any one of these. Any combination will give us the same outcome, 100% heterozygous. Dominant trait, recessive trait. So let's look at that with a Punnett square. Here are the parents, the gametes of the parents. So we have one dominant allele there, one dominant allele there, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, these represent the, the gametes, egg, egg, sperm, sperm. So now when fertilization happens, the only possible combination are, will be dominant trait with a recessive trait, dominant trait with a recessive trait, dominant trait with a recessive trait, dominant trait with a recessive trait. So in the F1 generation, we will get 100% heterozygous offspring. So that will always be the case. True breeding when you have complete dominance. We'll talk about that later. True breeding parents, one homozygous dominant, one homozygous recessive, will always give you 100% heterozygous offspring in the F1 generation. This is just looking at 
the same idea, but just giving you some images here. Homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. Eggs, sperm, combination will always be 100% heterozygous. And if this is complete dominance, then we'll get 100% dominant trait. So all of the offspring in the F1 generation will be purple flowers or pink flowers in this case. Now, if we cross to heterozygous individuals, so dominant trait, recessive trait, dominant trait, recessive trait, then we get a variety of different outcomes in the F2 generation. So here, let's say these are the eggs, these are the sperm. We get an egg and a sperm coming together, homozygous dominant. Sperm, egg coming together, heterozygous. Egg, sperm coming together, heterozygous. Egg, sperm coming together, homozygous recessive. So what this tells us is we have 25% of the time homozygous dominant, 50% of the time heterozygous, 25% of the time homozygous recessive. That's the 1 to 2 to 1 ratio of the genotypic ratio. But if we're talking about the phenotypic ratio, what do they look like? Then, because the big A is dominant over the small A, when we are heterozygous, we will still see the dominant trait. So this one would be purple, these two would be purple, and only this one will be white. And that's where we get 75% dominant, 25% recessive, or 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. So 1 to 2 to 1 genotypic ratio, 3 to 1 phenotypic ratio. In the F2 generation, because we have crossed two heterozygous parents. So seeing this again, just with the pretty diagrams, heterozygous parents, both of them are big A, little a, big A, little a, gives us that one to two to one genotypic ratio or three to one phenotypic ratio. Three of the flowers in that F2 generation will be pink, one will be white, or 75% of them will be pink, 25% of them will be white. So this is looking at all of those characteristics that I showed you before, as well as a few more that Gregor Mendel worked with, and he found, so he was looking at the shape, again, round versus wrinkled, uh, yellow versus green, inflated versus wrinkled, seed pod, um, oh, sorry, yellow, uh, yeah, green versus yellow, seed, uh, p seed pod color, uh, flower color, purple and white, flower position, is it within the stem or at the tip of the stem, and stem length, tall versus dwarf. So all of these traits that he looked at when he started with true breeding parents, took it through the first generation and then on to the second generation, he found that he always had a three to one ratio for the dominant to the recessive trait. Now Mendel came up with two very important laws about genetics that again we have only further supported and still support uh, these ideas, the first one being the law of segregation. What this means is that each allele of each gene will segregate into two different gametes. So what that means is that if we look here, this is a cell that's going through becoming the gametes, so it's dividing by meiosis. If you look here, we have two long chromosomes, the red and the blue. Those are homologous. Then we have two short chromosomes. These are also homologous. So just think about the red, the two red chromosomes here coming from the mom, the two blue ones coming from the dad. So prophase occurs, crossing over happens if you remember that, and then metaphase are lining up with their homolog. So they're lining up here with their homologs. And then in anaphase one, the homologs are separating. So think about an allele being on this chromosome 
and an allele being on this chromosome. This allele, the gene, on these two chromosomes are the same trait. They both might be flower color, but this allele may be purple flowers, this allele may be white flowers. And then on this chromosome, we might have another gene that is flower height or plant height. And so we may have the tall gene on this chromosome, whereas the short allele on this chromosome. So what happens during anaphase one is those homologs separate and then telophase one. And then ultimately, those homologs are put into two different cells. Now these cells are each going to undergo meiosis too to actually make the gametes. But at this point, you can already see that the red chromosome is separate from the blue chromosome. And here it's the blue chromosome is separate from the red chromosome. And that's important because this is stating that those alleles will always end up or should always end up in two different gametes. So we shouldn't, it'll be a mistake if it ever, when it does happen, but when things operate correctly, both alleles, the two alleles for every particular trait will end up in two different gametes. And that's the law of segregation. They are going to segregate equally into, into the gametes.